a viewer asked if I could do a video on the specialty scales of the Hemi 266 electronics slide rule. So I'm going to try to do this one, uh, maybe brief uh, video, and I'm going to stick just to the electronic scales. I'm not going to be, let me zoom in a little so you can see the, the rule a little better. I'm not going to be talking about the ordinary uh, scales, log log and A, B, C, D and so on. Instead, I'm going to just concentrate on the electronic side. Now, before I do, and by the way, you can find all of this in Chapter 9 of the 266, uh, Hemi 266 slide rule manual that you can download from the uh, International Slide Rule Museum website. The first thing that I'll point out is the electronic scales are color-coded. Green generally refers to impedance. Black normally is used for uh, resonant frequency and red is used for time constants. Now that's especially apparent when you look on the left here you see XL and uh, is all uh, and XC written in green in the formulas. But some scales, particularly these top two scales, are used both for time constant and for uh, impedance. Here is the impedance on this end, but the same scale on the other end is for time constant. And the difference is, if you read time constant, you're reading from right to left, and you read the red scales. Uh, in other words, this would be one second red on the top scale. It would also be one meg ohm red on the impedance scale. In other words, red here. And the uh, time constants in general are red on the, uh, the red scales. We'll talk about those a little bit. And then, of course, there is a scale for inductance and a scale for capacity uh, there. So let's, let's take a look at a few examples. And like I say, I'm going to take these examples out of the instruction book so that you can follow the book and look at the video and, and match the two. The first example is to find the impedance of a 35 millihenry coil at a frequency of 60 cycles per second. Now today we would call that 60 Hertz, but back in the day they called it cycles per second. It's the same thing, uh, it's just a different terminology. And the unknown is XL. So we're going to be using these three scales, the L scale, and, and on this rule Remember, the L scale on the back is for inductance. It's not for logarithms. On most slide rules, the L scale is for logarithms. The F scale is for the frequency, and we're trying to look for XL. So let's uh, see how we would do that. And I'm going to, to zoom in. I realize it's very hard to see these, uh, these rules. But what I have, uh, I'll tell you what I've done, and then uh, you, can, you can sort of fill in the blanks mentally. I have set the frequency of 60 hertz on the F scale, which is this scale. And you'll notice right there is a 5, and just to the right of that is 6. So you ask, well, how do I know that that's 60 hertz, not 600 or whatever? And the reason is that if you look to the right over here, you see that is one kilocycle. And the way that the, the rule is laid out, every time that it changes by a decade, 
uh, if it's not labeled, then they use a dot symbol. So that is a kilocycle. The double dot means means 100. In other words, two zeros is what the double dot means. So it would be to the left of that. So the five would be 50, and then it, just a little above 50 is 60. So I have set the hairline on 60. Then the inductance scale is this one. And you will see over here there is a millihenry. You notice a single dot right there. That would be 10 millihenrys. And double dot over here would be 100 millihenrys, and we're looking for 35. So this would be 50, 40, and 30, and midway between 30 and 40 is 35. So I set 35 millihenries on the L scale with 60 hertz on the uh, frequency scale. Then you move the slide down to the place where it reads XL. Notice that that's in green. And it's color-coded that way because you're going to read it back on this top scale. Remember I said this top scale, if it's red and green, it's in, in uh, it's impedance. If it's, re if it's in red, it's time constant. So that would be 13 and just a little bit more ohms. And it turns out the correct answer is 13.2 ohms. So I've written the answer, 13.2 ohms, here. And then we'll move on to the next example to find resonant frequency. The, by the way, uh, this works exactly the same way for capacity reactants. You just use the, the C scale instead of the L scale, and you can look at the manual for, for that. Uh, so we're going to do resonant frequency of an inductor 7 microhenries and a capacitor 50 picofarads. Now it's interesting because picofarads were, was being used in Japan, which was a metric country, long before we adopted it in the United States. In the, in the day, this would have been called a micro microfarad, MMF. So if you see an old schematic, a U.S. Uh, schematic, and it has MMF, that just means PF, picofarads. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set 7 microhenries on the L scale and 50 picofarads on the CF scale, not the C scale. And I'll show you both of those in a second. So here is the rule. And so that I'll point out the particular scales. we can get it to focus. There we are. And the CF scale is this scale right here. And you will notice that it's set to the 5. Let's see if I can use a little better pointer. It's set, the hairline is set on 5. If you look over to the right, you find here one picofarad. 10 picofarads is unfortunately right under the edge of the slide, so you can't see that. So 50 picofarads would be between uh, 10 picofarads, or, or uh, yeah, 10 picofarads, and the, the double dot that you see here, which is 100 picofarads. So that's 50 picofarads. Now, the L scale is appears both on the slide and on the body of the rule. And it's repeated. The second L scale is down here on the body. And you'll notice there that just to the left here you see one microhenry. And then, so this would be two microhenries, five microhenries, six microhenries, seven. And so the hairline is on seven. So I've set L to 7 microhenries, and I, the hairline is also on, so I moved the slide so that the hairline is on the CF scale at 50 picofarads. Then you go down and read 
where it says F naught. Let me see if we can zoom in just a little more without it losing the focus. Okay, so you move down to here and you see the F zero marking right there. And then you read the resonant frequency on the F zero scale, which is this bottom uh, scale. And this is five megahertz. This is 10 megahertz. Now in the day they called it megacycle. So this is 10 MC. Today we would call that 10 megahertz or mega H. And so that is five, six, seven, eight, and, and about halfway in between is 8.5 megahertz. And so we've written the resonant frequency of 8.5 megahertz in here. Now let's do a third one, and I think I'll make this one the last because this we've done an impedance calculation, we've done a resonant frequency calculation, we're now going to do a time constant calculation. I'm going to use an RC time constant. Once again, this example is in the manual. 250K resistor and a 0 0.0015 microfarad capacitor. Now today we would call that one and a half nanofarads, but I'm going to use their terminology and then compute the time constant. And of course that will be in seconds or milliseconds or microseconds, etc. So, we're going to be using the R scale, the C scale, and the TC scale. Now, use the legends on the rule to help you in these examples. You notice that this is the RTC scale in red over here, and We'll look at the uh, C scale in a second. The C scale is the red C scale here. And so what I have done is set the C scale. Remember, that's the, the lowest scale on the slide to the capacitor value of 0 0.0015 microfarads. Now, how do I know that's true? Well, here I see 0 0.001 microfarads, and so that too would be 0 0.002 microfarads, and halfway in between is 0 0.0015. And I have set that opposite 250 uh, kilo ohms, which is on this next to the last scale at the top. In other words, the one with the two right there. This is double, uh, is two zeros, and so reading over to the right is one zero. By the way, I found that the, I was more efficient. If I first bracketed the number I'm looking for within 10 to the third, in other words, a thousand. So, for example, if you're reading 250K, look for the, the number that is written on the slide rule. In this case, it's a mega ohm. It's just right there. And uh, the so that would be a mega ohm. This would be 100 kilo ohms. And then over here would be 10 kilo ohms and so on. And if you bracket it, that tells you where in, on the rule to, to look for the value you're looking for. So this would be 200 kilo ohms. This would be 500 kilo ohms. 400, 300, and then of course 200. Halfway between 300 and 200 is 250. So I set 250 kilo ohms on the R scale with 0 0.0015 on the C scale. Then you move the slide to the TC. I've overshot it. 
hard to do this with one hand. Let me reach in here and There we go. TC is the red indication there. And then you read the time constant on the TC scale, which is the same scale that you set resistance on. This is, uh, well, let's, let's look over here. The... Here is a microsecond. Look in red. And then over here is a millisecond, right there. So we've bracketed it within a thousand, ten to the third. So this would be a half a millisecond. This would be two tenths of a millisecond. And that double line would be a uh, uh, one millisecond, uh, the double zero, uh, the double dot. So we're reading 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and this would be 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 uh, milliseconds. It's, it's about eight, in other words, it's about eight tenths of the way between uh, 0.2 and I'm sorry, between 0.3 and 0.4, it's about eight tenths of the way. So we read about 0.38 milliseconds. We'll write that here. And that is our final answer. There are many other operations you can do on the, the 266, including things like surge impedance, and uh, which can be useful. Uh, of course, it can do all the usual slide rule things. It can also do decibels and, and many other things. I'm not going to take that the time here. I'm going to try to keep this video a little bit shorter than usual. But I hope this has given you an idea of what the capabilities of the 266 are and how you can read the scales in order to do the operations as in the manual. Now the manual is pretty clear. And I suggest if you're having trouble, look, uh, read the manual a couple of times and uh, you'll, you'll discover eventually that it uh, does work. So this is mainly intended for those people who don't have a slide rule and are uh, looking for something physical to tie to the manual description. I hope you've enjoyed this. I certainly thank you for watching it and I apologize for the narrow nature of this. I talked more about the 266 and its place within specialty slide rules and also its place within hemi slide rules in those two videos. But because I had a viewer request, I thought I would uh, do this. I did not show any of those scales and I had promised that if somebody wanted to see those, uh, uh, some examples, that I would do that. So uh, this is fulfilling the promise. Look forward to some more videos. And in the meantime, please have a nice day.